Today's green list is my mock draft. Again, uh, with my role as the host this year, I have spent so much time dissecting all this, and I also have received from our extraordinary research department a list with every team's primary needs. And so I have done a mock draft. I've decided who all these teams should take. To be clear, this is not who I think they're going to take. I don't know who they're going to take. I'm going to follow the draft wherever it leads next Thursday night. But here's who I would take if I were in their shoes. And a quick disclaimer, I don't know that I for sure that I would take Zach Wilson at number two if I were the Jets. But for me to change that when it is such a certainty would so fundamentally change everything so as to make the rest of this exercise meaningless. Like, if I put Trey Lance or Justin Fields at number two, now the rest of the picks don't mean anything because we all know there's, like, no chance of them happening. It would be like me projecting Jacksonville trading out of number one. So I'm not doing that. So for the purposes of the exercise, Trevor Lawrence is one and Zach Wilson is two because we know for sure that's how it's going to go. And number three is when it gets interesting. And I know Vegas disagrees and Shefty disagrees and they know better than I do. But I'm telling you what I would do if I were the 49ers, I would take Trey Lance. Everyone I talk to says the ceiling on Trey Lance from North Dakota State is the highest of any of the quarterbacks in this draft, including Trevor Lawrence. He's got that much ability. He's got innate leadership. Everybody loves him. He's completely inexperienced. He's only started 17 games, same number as Kyler Murray. Obviously, Murray started those at Oklahoma, and he started them playing at North Dakota State. He would have played another season if there had been another season uh, this past year for his team. And if he had, I think he'd be the second pick in the draft. And to me, they've got the exact formula. They've got Kyle Shanahan. He's the closest thing you can get to Andy Reid. They've got Jimmy Garoppolo. He's a perfect stand-in in this scenario for Alex Smith. And they take Trey Lance with the hope that he turns into their Patrick Mahomes. The, the, the situation, the parallels are just sitting right there in front of you. That's the kind of talent I think Lance has. I think his ceiling is that high. I would make him the third pick in this draft. That would mean quarterbacks go one, two, three. And then I believe the team that people are not paying enough attention to with this is Denver. Everyone's talking about the Bears trading up. They're at 20. Washington, they're at 19. New England, they're at 15. Right in front of your eyes are the Denver Broncos, who are as desperate for a quarterback as any of them and a lot closer. I believe Denver trades up from 9 to 4 and takes Justin Fields, quarterback out of Ohio State, who also has the ridiculous ceiling. You know about the athletic ability. Do you know about the leadership? Do you know that when Ohio State, when the Big Ten wasn't playing football last year, he started a campaign to get them to play? He got 320,000 online signatures in the middle of a pandemic to get the Big Ten to play football last year. Enormous leadership during all the social justice movement of, of last summer. Teammates love him. Plays tough, plays hurt. Insanely talented. Justin Fields makes sense. I'm Denver, I'm trading up to number four, and I'm taking Fields. Then we get to five in Cincinnati. Don't overthink this. I don't care if Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts are sitting there. Joe Burrow can't throw them the ball if he's lying flat on his back or worse, lying in a hospital room. That's the last place we saw him. Take Penay Sewell. He won the Outland Trophy at the age of 19. He's that kind of guy. Just put him at left tackle and just forget about it for the next 15 years. He's that good. Take him for sure at number five. That's a lock. At six, the Miami Dolphins are dancing in the streets because Kyle Pitts <laughs> fell to them. Kyle Pitts, who was a weapon unlike anything we see in the NFL. He is the number one offensive weapon in this draft for sure. Mel Kuyper said today on our show, he's the best tight end prospect he's seen in his 43 years doing the draft. And frankly, he's more than just a tight end. He's just an offensive weapon. Don't tell me you have Mike Kosicki. Mike Kosicki is a really good player and he'll continue to have a role. But if you're going to tell me you can't take Kyle Pitts because that would be redundant with Mike Kosicki, that tells me you've never seen Kyle Pitts. That's not what Kyle Pitts does. Kyle Pitts is Travis Kelsey waiting to happen. You take him. Number seven, the Lions, whose primary need is wide receiver, equally delighted. They get the best one. Jamar Chase won the Boletnikoff Award two years ago, 2019, on that championship team with Burrow. Spectacular player, spectacular talent. Lock, stock, barrel, nothing to discuss. He goes seven to the Lions. Eight is the Panthers. You just got Sam Darnold. Don't play around. Take an offensive lineman. Protect him. He's never had that. 
Protect him. You've got good weapons. You have good receivers. You have Christian McCaffrey. Take Rashawn Slater, Northwestern. And again, you can put him inside, outside. Put him on your offensive line. Plug him in. Don't even worry about it for the next 15 years. <laughs> Great player. Guaranteed. Sign him to a second contract right now. He's going to be a terrific player for you forever. Nine was, for me, the hardest one. The Falcons trade back to there. I actually could see them trying to trade back again, but I just didn't want to forecast that because now we're getting ridiculous. So I gave them Micah Parsons because he's the best defensive player in this draft. You hear a lot of other names going ahead of him. I get it based on the premium of the position. Patrick Sertan's a terrific player. J.C. Horn, Jalen Phillips. There are a lot of good defensive players. Quiddy Pay, the best defensive player in this draft is Micah Parsons from Penn State. Don't overthink it. And then finally, number 10, everyone has Dallas taking a corner. Almost everyone is projecting Patrick Sertan. I went with J.C. Horn for one reason and one reason only. My buddy Ryan Clark said he's better. And when it comes to defensive backs, when Ryan talks, I listen. R.C. said take Horn over Sertan by an eyelash. Said it yesterday on Get Up. Again, when he talks about defensive backs, I listen. And so that is my green list today. It's my mock draft. Trevor Lawrence won, Zach Wilson two, Trey Lance three to the Niners, Broncos trade up to take Justin Fields, Penny Sewell five, Kyle Pitt six, Jamar Chase seven, Rashawn Slater eight, Falcons trade back and take Micah Parsons nine, and J.C. Horn goes number 10. That's what I think. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.